Hi guys, Dane here, and today we are going to be doing part 5 of the My Cat Picks My TBR series. So, in the last one, Biggie picked out for me Porno by Irvin Welsh, which turns out to have super tiny pages, and obviously Welsh writes in Scottish dialect quite often as well, which makes it for quite slow reading. So I fell behind a little bit with this series, but I'm now looking to pick it back up again. So, uh, I guess I'm going to hand over to Biggie and Dane to uh, see what he picks for me. Hey Biggie, we ready to pick some books are we? Okay, so we're gonna start with, here we have Dreamcatcher by Stephen King, Insomnia by Stephen King, and Sleeping Beauties by Stephen and Owen King. Those are the three we've got Biggie. I see you're already intrigued by Sleeping Beauties. What we need to do, we've got different treats today. Today we've got the Felixes, haven't we? So, which one are we going for, Biggie? We're going for Insomnia. Thank you. Okay. Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rees. Fox News Fuckfest by Mandy DeSandra. And Kill River by Cameron Rabik. Ah, Fox News Fuckfest by Mandy DeSandra. Thank you, Biggie. That is number two. All right, so we've just got one more to, to choose from now. Here we have David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell, The Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami, and The Comedian by Graham Greene. I'm ready. Choose one of the three, please. That was just one that was on the floor. Choose one from one of the books. Here we go. Haruki Murakami, Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World. Thank you very much, Biggie. Good boy. Alrighty, so these are the three that he picked for me. So there is Insomnia by Stephen King, which is actually one of those Stephen King books. I've, I've had it for ages. Uh, it's got a bookmark in it from a place I don't even know, which is interesting. And uh, yeah, it's like 750 odd pages, which is why I've never actually picked it up and read through it before. So I'm looking forward to getting to this. I just hope that it is good, basically, because... I think the last Stephen King book that Biggie picked out for me, or one of the last ones, he picked out, I um, can't even remember the name of it now, that's how dull I found it. The one about Mike Noonan, the writer. Bag of Bones, that was it. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like Bag of Bones. So if this follows that route, then we could be here for as long as it was between the last few videos as I read this a little bit of a time at night. But generally, Stephen King has, has a pretty good strike rate with me. He also picked out Fox News Fuckfest by Mandy DeSandra. So this is Bizarro Fiction. It's published by New Kink Books. And it's basically as it sounds, you know, and as you could probably guess from the cover. I'm not too sure how much of this I'm even going to be able to follow because I don't really... I, I don't know. Politics, man, is... I watch it from afar, but I try not to get too involved because just everyone is wrong, basically. And it seems so obvious to me what we need to do, but nobody ever listens. And every t also every time I've voted, like, the thing I've voted against. I've never voted for something. I've always voted against something. And the thing I've voted against has always happened. Like Brexit and all this other stuff. So I don't know how much of the, uh, like, the references in this I'm going to get. But I'm sure it's going to be just a barrel of laughs. And then I have Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami. Which I know very little about, but it does say on the rear cover, a narrative particle accelerator that zooms between Wild Turkey Whiskey and Bob Dylan, Unicorn Schools and Voracious Librarians, John Coltrane and Lord Jim. Science fiction, detective story and postmodern manifesto. So yeah, I mean that sounds interesting. And it's been a while since I've read some Murakami, so I, I'm about due. Alright. Okay, so I have read Fox News Fuckfest by Mandy DeSandra, the first of the books that Biggie picked for me. And so I'll be honest, because this is like a political, bizarro, like parody book, but also with erotica in and stuff, I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, mainly because, like, American politics isn't really my thing. I don't know too much about it, and I was worried I might not get some of the references. Like, there were a lot of people in this who I didn't know who they were, and I'm sure if you were an American, you would know who they were, and you would get, like, more out of it because of that. But with that, like, with that said, I did actually really enjoy it. Like, I unironically enjoyed it. There were, like, a few typos here and there, but mostly it was, like, really well written and well edited. Um, like, probably above average for an indie book, to be honest. Obviously, like, there were all these weird sex scenes, but... 
they actually tied into the storyline fairly well because it made sense. The liberals had released this, uh, like it infected the water supply at Fox News and that meant that everybody started having orgies. And it's certainly like adult and 18 plus, but it gets a lot of bad reviews. And I actually think for what it is, it's pretty good. I think bearing in mind this is a genre which, like the books are often like deliberately bad, if that makes sense. They're like so bad they're good. And I think this is a great example of that. And I was pretty impressed with it. So I gave this a 3.75 out of 5. I would certainly read some Mandy DeSander again. And I would recommend this if you like really strange books. Um, or if you're overly political. I mean, it, it, does, it doesn't really... I guess it does poke fun at like the Republican Party more than like the Liberals. But it does poke fun at both sides. And I think DeSandra's biography even says... Um, What's it? Uh, I am an independent, neither on the left nor the right. I enjoy politics the way the Joker enjoys crime. I just want to cause trouble. So yeah, uh, that's what I made of this one. So I will be back soon with my next book. Okay, so I read the next book that my cat picked out for me, which was Insomnia by Stephen King. I also filmed and posted a full review of this, which I will link to if it's out. Uh, but basically, my thoughts on this one... For a start, you need to be kind of an, a seasoned Stephen King fan, I guess. Like, it really helps if you've read the Dark Tower books because there were little references in this that you might not otherwise get. And for me, those references were the highlights of this book and, like, the main reason why it kept me turning the pages. So I read uh, Bag of Bones earlier this year and just thought it was really kind of long and dull and tedious. This one kind of had some similar pacing issues, but at least it did have this added lore that I kind of found interesting and that made me want to keep reading. There were also these just odd scenes here and there where I just really enjoyed them. So I enjoyed it more than because of that, but I don't know. For a long old Stephen King book, there wasn't a lot in here. Like I could have reread Firestarter, for example, which is amazing. But instead I read this, like, I don't, I can't see myself wanting to reread it. But I do think it is worth reading for Stephen King fans, especially, again, if you've read the Dark Tower books and you want to know more about Carr. I mean, Ro uh, Roland is in here, there's an entire section called The Crimson King. And so there is some cool stuff in there because of that. And it's also set in Derry as well, which is like obviously an important part of the Stephen King multiverse, which and was where it was set. So... Yeah, there are some redeeming factors to it, but overall, I wasn't that impressed by it. I gave it a 3.25 out of 5. It was fine, but um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend this over other Stephen King books for sure. But uh, I am glad my cat picked it out for me because I've been meaning to get to this for ages. And finally, I did it. Thank you, Biggie. All right, and then the last book that Biggie got me to read was Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami. This one has been sitting on my shelves for ages, and I finally got to it. I'm going to read you the blurb here. A narrative particle accelerator that zooms between Wild Turkey Whiskey and Bob Dylan, Unicorn Schools and Voracious Librarians, John Coltrane and Lord Jim. Science fiction detective story and postmodern manifesto all rolled into one rip-roaring novel. Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World is the tour de force that expanded Haruki Murakami's international following. Tracking one man's descent into the Kafkaesque underworld of contemporary Tokyo, Murakami unites East and West, tragedy and farce, compassion and detachment, slang and philosophy. The result is a wildly inventive fantasy and a meditation on the many uses of the mind. So this book is nuts. It kind of reminded me of a combination of, say, William Gibson's Neuromancer, Stephen King's Dark Tower books, and William S. Burroughs, I guess. And uh, obviously Murakami's work is translated. I did have some issues with the translation of this. Actually, this was translated by uh, Alfred Birnbaum, who I've not heard of before. I think all the ones that I've read of his before were by Jay Rubin, and they were like really good. So I think I just prefer Rubin's translations. There are even a few typos in this, which kind of threw me a bit, considering it's published by Vintage. But yeah, I mean, it was still uh, an interesting enough read. It's very experimental. I don't think it's for everybody. There's a lot of magical realism in there, so if that's your vibe, you might like this. Personally, I don't like magical realism too much, but I do like a lot of the other kind of things we mentioned here, so like detective story and like, well, I mean, it's hard boiled, hard boiled detective, you know? And it was just weird. So for the first hundred or so pages, I actually read it as a bedtime book and wasn't really enjoying it. I was reading it like 20, 25 pages at a time each evening, and I didn't know what was going on. And then suddenly about the 100 page mark, which is about a quarter of the way through, I was suddenly hooked. 
And I still didn't know what was going on. I think towards the last 150 pages, I finally kind of wrapped my head around it. And I think this is the kind of book that you can reread multiple times. You can take something new from it each time. But I, at the same time, I don't think that should put you off. Even if you're new to Murakami, I, this could probably work as a standalone, I guess. I mean, actually, so far, I, I, my favourite Murakami book has been uh, what I talk about when I talk about running, which is non-fiction. I also love his short stories. So I'd probably recommend either of those before this one. And then I guess maybe Norwegian would. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. It was pretty solid. And uh, it left me wanting more. It left me wanting more Murakami. So I'm looking forward to, to getting some more in the future. Maybe Biggie will pick me some. He probably won't because I don't think I own any more. Maybe one more, I don't know. But anyway, that is it for this My Cat Picks My TBR video. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read these books. And if so, what you thought. let me know what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more because there will be another My Cat Picks My TBR video. And the next issue is going to be a Bill Bryson, Peter James and Isaac Asimov special. So there are going to be three books by each of those authors. And I will definitely be getting one book from each of them. So we'll see how that goes. But as always, it has been fun. And I'll see you soon for the next bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I think I rescued it. Now I just have to wait for Biggie to wake up.